Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be looking at perfect square trinomials today, how to factor them, how to identify them, and maybe see some patterns in them. The first thing we're going to do before we look at the perfect square trinomials is to see where they come from. Let's go ahead and expand some of these binomials. Um, this first one, we have x plus 4 squared. Remember, when we're doing that, we aren't just squaring the first term and squaring the last term. What we're doing, we're actually saying x plus 4 times x plus 4. And when we do this, you can either use the FOIL method, which is popular method, or you can take the first term times the first term, the first term then times the last term, and then take the second term and do the same thing. Um, when we do that, we'll take the first term times the first term, That'll give us x squared. Then we'll take this x times 4 to give us 4x. Then we'll go to our second term and multiply that times the first to get 4x, and multiply that second term times this second term to get 16. In the final step, we'll just join together like terms. We have uh, 4x and a 4x. We add those together, we'll get 8x. And that will be our final expanded simplified solution for x plus 4 squared. Now let's go over here. This one here has a negative in it. It means exactly the same thing, x minus 6 times x minus 6. And we're going to solve it in exactly the same way. We'll take this x times the first term, x squared, x times the second term, which will give us negative 6x. We'll then look at the negative 6 and multiply that times the first term, gives us negative 6 x and the negative 6 times the last term, negative 6 times negative 6, will give us a positive 36. We'll join together our like terms of negative 6x and negative 6x to give us negative 12x and our final simplified trinomial. So here is our two simplified trinomials. And I want you to start looking at them and see if you see any patterns here. This is very important that we take a look at this and look for patterns, because that's going to help you save a lot of time when you're dealing with perfect square trinomials. I'll point out a couple of the patterns. Maybe pause the recording, look for some patterns, and then turn it back on again and see the patterns that I, I'll show you. The first pattern um, is that this number 4 and also negative 6, if you double that, it'll give you the middle term. 4 times 2, 8. Negative 6 times 2, negative 12. So that middle, second term there, doubled, will give you the middle term here, with the x out afterwards. All right. The next um, thing that you'll notice, and this will be common for all perfect squares, is that if you take this number and square it 4 times 4, you'll get the final term, 16. Negative 6 times negative 6, positive 36. So that's two patterns, two things that are the same between these two. You'll also notice that the solutions are exactly the same every time for these types of, of binomials. Let's take those patterns that we've, we've seen and um, apply that to what we have here. If we're asked to factor a trinomial, and you look at this trinomial and you say, well, half of 18 is 9. We can write that in there. Half of 18 is 9. 9 squared is 81. Or the square root of 81 is also 9. So half of the middle term is equal to the square root of the final term. Or half of this squared will give you that. Okay, You can look at it either way. Anyway, we have that number 9 now. And when we're asked to factor, that's basically all we need to know. What that tells us is that a plus 9 squared, or a, pl a plus 9 times a plus 9, will give us this trinomial, right? Because we took the middle term, or the second term here, and doubled it to get our middle term, and we squared it to get our final term. So let's look at this one here. What's half of 20? It's 10. 10 squared is 100. So therefore, that's a perfect square trinomial. And our final solution will be y plus 10 squared. We'll go over a couple more like that in just a minute. First, I want to take what we've just done 
and do a quick check on perfect squares. I want you to look at these four trinomials and you can pause the recording and try and figure out which ones are perfect squares. All right, you'll notice that I wrote them in backwards order. The x squared is usually will appear at the beginning and the number will usually appear at the end, but it doesn't really matter. It's, this is not in standard form, but it's still a perfect square trinomial. Um, if half of the middle term squared gives you the number. So let's look at our first one. Half of our middle term, 14 is 7, half of 14 is 7, 7 squared gives us 49. So that means that this first trinomial is indeed a perfect square trinomial. All right, let's move on to our next one. Half of negative 12 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is not 144. So therefore, this trinomial is not a perfect square. For this to be a perfect square, half of this number here would have to be negative 12. So this number would have to be negative 24y, and then half of that would be 12, and 12 squared is 144. All right. Um, looking at our third trinomial, we have 22y in the middle. Half of 22 is 11, and 11 squared is 121. Therefore, this is a perfect square trinomial as well. In our third trinomial, we have negative 16a. Half of negative 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared or negative 8 times negative 8 will give us a positive 64. So that is also a perfect square trinomial. All right, that's how we find perfect square trinomials. Once we're able to find whether it is a perfect square trinomial, these numbers that we have listed below, that they're going to be very helpful in actually factoring. Um, for these ones, what we're going to do is we'll actually say, are they perfect square trinomials? And if they are, then we will go ahead and factor them. So let's look at our first one. Half of 26 is 13. 13 squared gives us 169. So that one is a perfect square trinomial. And therefore, the solution is x plus 13 squared. All right, let's look at our second one. Half of negative 14 is negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 7, or in other words, negative 7 squared, is a positive 49. So that is a perfect square trinomial. So all we need to do is stick in a, which is, by the way, the square root of the first term. And this is the square root of the final term and the sign from the middle. That's another way to look at it. Take the square root of the first term, square root of the last term, and take the sign from the middle term. All right, and that will be our final solution. Let's look at um, trinomial number three. We take half of the middle term, which is negative one, because negative two divided by two is negative one. Negative 1 squared will give us positive 1. So that is indeed a perfect square. We'll take the square root of the first term, y squared. Divide, square root of y squared is y. And we'll square the entire binomial. And that will give us our final solution. So that is how to factor perfect square trinomials and find out if they are perfect squares. I hope that this recording has been helpful for you and have a wonderful day.